Okay, so we're going to learn just or focus just on heat energy, also referred to sometimes as radiant energy. It says, does water keep getting hotter and hotter the longer it boils? Try to think about that without looking up the answer. And when we come in, I want you to talk about it with somebody at your table. And then also, how could you set up an experiment to see if it actually does or if it does not? Okay, heat. It says a form of energy caused by the internal motion of atoms, more specifically the friction of the atoms moving so fast and hitting up against each other. It says in the 18th century, Thompson, an American scientist, who became known as Count Rumford, during a drilling experiment, he proved that the theory of heat, in other words, he proved that it was an energy. They used to think that heat was a substance, maybe a form of matter, but he concluded and proved that it was really just energy. Forty years later, James P. Joule, that's where we get the term joules, investigates this theory and adds to it that motion is what produces heat friction. The faster it moves, the more friction there is, the hotter it gets. All right, heat transfer. There are three ways that heat can move from one thing to another. The first one is called conduction. It has a D right in the center of the word. That's how you'll remember, hopefully, that it's through direct contact. You cannot get burnt by an iron or a stove just by walking by it. You have to directly touch it. That's conduction. Cooking, you have to put the pan right on the flame or on the heated coil so that it gets hot. That's conduction. Conductors are anything that allows heat to move through. Almost always, they are metals, sorry. Iron, aluminum, copper, silver. Insulators are the things that keep it out or keep it in. Wood, plastic, rubber, air, believe it or not, when you put a jacket on, your jacket or your coat traps the air inside and that's actually what's keeping you warm. You want to remember this because you're going to be building a house that has ice inside of it that's going to act as your air conditioner and you want to find a way to keep it cool inside even if it's hot outside and we're going to use a heat lamp. Okay, the second type is convection. Convection is the idea that anything that is hot rises and anything that is cool sinks. This doesn't happen at the tops of mountains. It's up too high. The air is so thin at that point it can't hold on to the heat. This happens more where we live, down at the bottom of a mountainside. You know, we're, on the pl we're at the plains, we're at the coastal area. So think about just in your home. It's always hotter upstairs than it is downstairs. Um, if you have the room over the garage, you especially know that in the winter. It's very hot because all the hot air from the garage is rising up. And then in the winter, it's very cold because the garage is not heated and there's no heat to rise. All right, this type of transfer drives all weather Okay, so this one is taking place inside fluids, where conduction takes place in solids. I think you should pause here, go back, and make sure that you have written everything down into your notes. The last type of transfer is radiation. It says heat energy transferred through empty space. This would be the way that you feel the heat energy coming from the sun. You don't have to touch the sun to feel it. You don't have to be directly above the sun to feel it. It radiates outwardly. Think of rays, the sun's rays. Okay, this also happens when you sit near a fire. This is what would make your cheeks rosy. Make sure that you're writing all of this down into your notes so that you have it when we do our note check. All right, so heat transfer, it says convection, conduction, and radiation. If you look at this picture, the convection is the hands, are the hands, directly above the flame feeling the heat. The conduction is the poker that's being put into that 
that's actually heating up from directly touching the fire. And then radiation is the person sitting off to the side, still feeling the heat. Okay, it says, how does thermal energy move? Conduction, hotter? Irish? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. That will let me know if you were definitely listening, though. I'm just kidding. Mr. Clark, please call the main office. Mr. Clark. Okay. All right, it says conduction. The hotter, faster-moving particles bump into cooler, slower-moving particles and then speed them up. It gives you an example. Pancakes heat the butter, causing it to melt. Convection, just most importantly, it's traveling through liquids and gases. Remember, conduction is through solids. Radiation is through empty space. We'll go over that in class, we'll go over that. Okay, kinetic energy, the faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. We've already talked about that in the last unit. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules. In other words, temperature is measuring how fast the atoms are moving. Adding heat speeds up the atoms, causing more kinetic energy. So temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. Which, again, remember I said physics is something you already know. We're just putting the terms to it. All right, measuring temperature. We use a thermometer. There are three scales. Celsius scale, we use that in science. It's metric. Zero is freezing, 100 is boiling. Kelvin scale is used by scientists for extreme temperatures. For example, in outer space, maybe the temperature of a star or Pluto, something that is extreme. It says zero degrees Kelvin is considered absolute zero, which has never been reached. Think about this. In order to get absolute zero, the atoms can no longer be moving. They would have to be perfectly still. So why then could this not happen on Pluto or somewhere else in outer space where it's so far away from the sun or any other heat source? How come we can never get to absolute zero? See if you can let me know the answer to that next class. The Fahrenheit scale is what we use only in the United States. 32 degrees is freezing and 212 is boiling. There's a picture, if you're a picture person, of the scales side by side. All right, measuring heat. Remember we said energy is measured in joules? Well, heat also has its own unit that you can measure it in. It's calories. It says one calorie is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. That's literally just defining what a heat calorie is. Specific heat is the ability of a substance to absorb heat. Not all things have the same ability to absorb heat. Okay, so when we're looking at this example, it says water is one. Aluminum is 0.22. That means it absorbs it very easily. Heat. Okay, remember we're talking about heat. Mercury is 0 0.03. The way that you calculate heat energy, and this is where we're gonna stop for today, it says heat gained or lost is equal to the mass, so that's how many grams it is, multiplied by the change in temperature, multiplied by the specific heat. Look at your example. How much heat would it take to raise the temperature of four grams of aluminum from zero to five. So right here, my four grams is my mass. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply it by my change in temperature. I'm saying it's going to go from zero to five. So my change in temperature is five. Okay, so this is my change in temperature. This little triangle means change in. And then I'm going to multiply it by what's given is the specific heat of aluminum, which is 0.22. And if you just put all of that into your calculator, you end up with 4.4 calories. If you were to put 4.4 joules, it would still be correct because heat is energy. All right, so make sure that that's actually where you stop, and then this is where you'll end up picking up 
for the next class. Okay, this one says, how is potential energy related? Potential energy, remember, is stored. It says heat energy is used to burn off food calories. Now we store our food, right? So one food calorie is equal to a kilocalorie, which equals 1,000 heat calories. So in different words, it takes 1,000 heat calories to burn off just one food calorie. Of all the different things that you could do to help burn off the food that you eat, or never mind, I don't know what I was going to say right there. You can see that running burns the most, then jogging, then swimming, skiing or elliptical would go in here, skating, riding a bike, walking. Okay, so no matter what, we always want to make sure we're moving. We're doing something to get those calories burned so that they don't have a chance to just store themselves in our body and later turn into fat, making us unhealthy. All right, a phase change is requ says a change in the phase requires heat energy. We've talked about this before. We talked about phase changes. Ice melts to water, water vaporizes to gas. And remember, it wasn't the temperature that actually made it change. It was the heat energy. It was the movement of the atoms. Heat of fusion, just to remind you, was solid to liquid or liquid to solid. Heat of vaporization was liquid to gas or gas to liquid. The way I remember it is that vapor, a vapor is gas. Okay, so the only one that has gas in it as far as phase changes is going to end up being in heat of vaporization. The freezing and melting point of water are both zero. The difference is that when it's freezing, the atoms are slowing down. When it's melting, the atoms are speeding up. So it's not the temperature that's changed, it's the energy of the heat inside the atoms that's making a difference. Your boiling point of water is 100. It says during a phase change, there's only a change in energy, not temperature. This just shows you it's changing from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Becomes a molecule, like a um, molecule, and then it becomes plasma, which is charged. Remember ions, we learned about bonding. So at this point, they're charged. This is, exists on the sun. Okay, lots of radiation. That's what causes them to be charged. This phase change scale, we will go over extensively in class, but this should look familiar. We've done it before. Again, right here you see your phase changes when it's doing the phase change. This straight line shows us that the temperature is not changing. Only the heat energy, which is being measured down here. Okay, it says most substances expand when their temperature is increased. However, there always has to be something that breaks the rules. Water actually expands when it's freezing. Every other thing, including us, when we get really hot, our hands and our feet might get puffy. We swell up. Things get bigger when they're hot, smaller when they're cold, except for water. It's the only one that breaks the rules. Okay, a thermostat is what's in your house. You use it to control the temperature. Most of us have a digital thermostat that does it, and we can even set it to change the temperature of the house based on what time of the day it is. The old thermostats in older homes used to use a bimetallic strip. I will show you one in class. When it gets heated up, it bends, it coils. And when it would do that, it would turn off the heater. And then as the room would cool down, it would uncoil. And then as it would straighten itself back out, it would go back in the other direction. And then it would turn the heater back on. And that's what would be used. So here's a picture of it. It's coiling up whenever the heat's on it. But this really is what most of us have. Heat engines turn heat energy into movement, mechanical energy. They also involve combustion. They burn fuel. Remember, fuel is chemical. There are two types of combustion. External means that the fuel is being burned outside the engine. Internal means it's being burned inside the engine. It gives you two examples steam engine versus a diesel engine. There are your pictures if you want to see what they look like. Alright, so this is the end of the notes for heat energy. Um, we're going to be doing some fun stuff in class. Remember, if you're visual, watch this as many times as you can. 
If you're auditory, I want you to listen to it. You don't have to stare at it. Just literally listen to it. And if you're kinesthetic, make yourself some flashcards. All right, see you guys in class.